I simulated Trump's policies in Democracy 4, a government simulation game, and this is what happened. Over the last weeks, I have read hundreds of articles about Trump's promises in the campaign and his policies during his four years in government. I took notes and I matched his positions with policies available in Democracy 4. Trump supports record funding for the police, I go to the simulation and massively increase funding for the police. Trump wants to reduce the corporate tax, I reduce the corporate tax. Trump likes nuclear energy, I allow widespread expansion of nuclear energy. Overall, I mapped 100 policies that Trump supports in seven different areas and I fitted it into the simulation. And this will be interesting because we will be able to see the specific impacts of these policies on several issues. Crime, violent crime, drug cartels, poverty, drug abuse, equality, GDP, debt, education, health, foreign relations, global influence, and many, many more. So are you ready? Let's see what happened. So first of all, let's see what has been the impact of Trump's policies and proposals on crime and law and order. I'm speaking about this first because this is obviously the main focus of Trump in his campaign. Uh, he has promised that he will reduce crime, violent crime, drug cartels and similar things. So let's see what has been the impact of the different policies that he has promised. So first of all, let's have a look at what happened overall with crime and violent crime. So let's have a look at non-violent crime first. So the game started here. The crime was extremely elevated, basically to the maximum. And we implemented several policies to reduce this in line with Trump's policies. But the impact was quite small. Non-violent crime decreased by a bit over 10%, which is something, but it's not a huge improvement. And here we can see how we did several things. So in line with Trump's policies, we massively increased funding for the police. Here you can see how basically we quadrupled the amount of funding that the police has. And this had quite a big impact in terms of reducing crime and violent crime. And as other things like alcohol abuse, drug addiction, and the social behavior. But still, crime overall didn't reduce that much. Uh, we introduced other policies, like we made the policing regime very harsh. This means that basically the police can handle difficult situations in a violent way, so using violence to reduce uh, people who are creating that situation or that are doing something illegal. Uh, we have also introduced the castle doctrine when it comes to self-defense laws. This basically means that people can use force against people who are committing a crime, even if that means that they end up killing that person. That's what the Castle Doctrine means and we changed it. Of course, we also have armed police almost to the maximum. There is no limit to weapons laws. Science crime was not really decreasing that much. We introduced other policies that at some point Trump has spoken about, so stop and frisk zones. Uh, this basically means areas and cities where the police can stop and frisk anyone without a reason. So just randomly uh, check people, which can have an impact in reducing crime, but it can increase racial tension because often it ends up being non-white men who are checked by the police, and it can also increase authoritarian powers. So this is the situation with crime. It went down by a bit over 10%, but not that much, despite all the policies that we introduced. And the reason is that while we introduced many policies to reduce crime, Many of the social roots of this level of crime, such as emotions of frustration and envy, antisocial behavior, alcohol abuse, drug addiction, unemployment, poverty, etc., etc., were not really solved or improved. So it did have an impact on crime, but not a huge impact. Honestly, I was expecting a bit of a higher impact of the many different policies that we have introduced. Now, let's see what was the impact on violent crime. So these are different crimes such as murder, rape, and muggings. Here we can see how Trump's policies had a way bigger impact than on general crime. Uh, violent crime reduced by over 30%. That's quite a lot. Not as much as I expected, but that's quite a lot. And here we can see how the main reason was the high number of police and armed police that we have. So again, I increased the funding for the police massively in line with Trump's policies. I allowed military equipment for police. 
By then, science crime was not reducing that much. I allowed military patrols in the cities. This is something that Trump has considered in the past and he might do if the situation with crime doesn't really improve rapidly enough. We also increase the policing regime to make it very harsh so that police can use violence in a wide range of situations. And this has a positive impact in terms of reducing crime, but it increases police use of force and other issues. Something else that we did to reduce violent crime is making the prison sentencing practice very harsh. This means that prison sentencing is very broad, is used widely, and it focuses on harsh, long sentences instead of focusing on rehabilitation. So Trump's policies have had quite an impact in terms of reducing violent crime. And let's see, for instance, the issue of drug cartels, because this has been one of the main focuses of Trump's during the campaign. At some point, he said that the drug cartels are waging war on America, and it's now time for America to wage war on the cartels. So that's been one of the main priorities of the campaign. And we can see here how the different policies promised by Trump did have a big impact in terms of reducing the influence of drug cartels, but not quite enough. I mean, it really went down a lot, but they were very persistent. And here we can see how we increased massively the prison sentencing practice. We made it very, very harsh in line with Trump's policies. In line with his promises, we allowed military equipment for police. This had a big impact in terms of reducing the influence of drug cartels. We increased the police. We increased the policing regime to make it very harsh. Armed police, stop and frisk zones, military patrols in cities, again, something that he has promised if the situation is not in control. So we can see how this had a big impact, but it proved quite persistent. Like it, by then it just reduced very, very slowly. And this has to do, of course, with latent root social issues. So the social and economic issues that are at the core of the existence of drug cartels. And this has to do with poverty levels, unemployment, illegal narcotics consumption, ghettos, and similar issues. Um, here we can see how poverty, for instance, went down a bit, but remained very high. Unemployment went up a bit in the beginning and then reduced, but it's, it was very stable, really. So we can see, and this is very interesting, how Trump's policies have had an impact on reducing crime, and especially violent crime but they haven't really addressed the core issues, the root issues of crime, such as poverty or unemployment. And that's why it has had an impact, but not a huge impact. First of all, we can see here how all these different policies had a huge impact on police brutality, which to be fair was already extremely high, but it stayed very high during the whole four years of Trump's presidency. This is, of course, related to police use of force, and it makes sense that it remained extremely high because, you know, we gave military equipment to the police, we made the policing regime very, very harsh, we provided a lot of funding to the armed police, and so, of course, police brutality was an issue. Now, to be fair, uh, I left some level of body cameras. So this is cameras that policemen have to wear so that later uh, it's possible to check if they have exceeded themselves in using force against suspects. And this is because Trump, in the past, he has said that some level of body cameras are necessary. He made some statements along those lines. So I left some level of funding for body cameras for policemen, but this didn't really have a big impact. Now, something very interesting too is checking the impact of the harsh approach to prison sentencing in terms of prison capacity, right? Because basically, if you send a lot of people to prison based on the crimes that they have done, that will mean that you either need to build more prisons or you will not have enough space in prisons. And here we can see how it's remained quite stable. So it didn't become a problem despite a lot of people going to prison. And this is mostly related to private prisons. In line with Trump's policies, I have allowed and promoted existence of private prisons. So this is prisons that are not run by the state, but rather by private companies. This is something that Trump has actually 
supported quite a lot as a way to have more prison capacity. Um, so during his presidency, he promoted quite a lot. He actually receives quite a lot of funding from companies that provide these services. So we can see how, whatever you think about it, it did have an impact in terms of increasing prison capacity and not having a huge issue of prison overcrowding. Something interesting too is what happened to the recidivism rate. This rate is the amount of former prisoners who end up getting arrested again for criminal actions or gone through a rehabilitation program. Um, so this makes sense because of course when you make the policing regime very harsh and the prison regime very harsh, that means that a bigger amount of people who have already gone through prison, they will struggle to reintegrate in society and they will probably get arrested again in the future. So unsurprisingly, the recidivism rate has gone up by quite a lot and prison overcrowding had also quite an influence on that. Now, to be fair, I introduced a prisoner rehabilitation program. The goal of this rehabilitation program is to re-educate those who commit crimes with the end goal of reintegrating them into society. This can involve a plethora of methods ranging from psychological treatment to education programs. And I did this because actually Trump, during his presidency, introduced the First Step Act that was a big policy that had to do with this, with prison rehabilitation programs. And so that actually surprised me quite a lot. I didn't know that he supported this kind of policies. So in line with his positions on the topic, I did introduce this program and I think it had an impact in terms of um, not having this recidivism rate extremely high. So it did increase, but it increased less than what I thought. Now let's have a look at what happened with immigration and illegal immigration. This was very, very interesting. So first, let's see immigration. Immigration basically plummeted uh, to the point that there's almost no immigration right now. And this was related to different Trump policies. But first, let me show you as well what happened with illegal immigration specifically. It also plummeted. There's basically no illegal immigration now. Now, this has to do with several policies that Trump has defended that you probably already know about. So Trump wants to finish the wall in the border. So I implemented a border wall that had huge effect. Uh, he also wants more immigration enforcement forces. So I increased funding for that. And also I made border controls very, very harsh in line with what he has said. So I basically allowed armed guards to be there at the border to control immigration, which has had a big impact in terms of illegal immigration, but also illegal narcotics. We're going to speak about that in a moment. So both illegal immigration and immigration have gone down by a lot. Uh, they basically almost don't exist. Now, another factor that was very, very important in terms of reducing immigration and illegal immigration is the lack of immigration demand. This is related to several issues. But basically, for instance, I introduced a total ban on refugee policy in line with what Trump has promised. Um, I also made the citizenship test very difficult so less people can reach citizenship. Again, these are all things that Trump has promised that he would do as president, but it also had to do with things that Trump didn't really intend. For instance, there's high unemployment, which reduces immigration demand. There's been very little stability, which also reduces immigration demand. So basically the combination of harsh policies on the border and harsh policies on immigration, like the border wall, the border controls, the total ban on refugees, etc., and the low immigration demand, which has to do with those policies, but also on economic issues, has led to a total plummeting of immigration, which is very interesting. So overall, in terms of law and order, we can say that Trump's policies were quite effective, even though with some limitations. Uh, here we can see, for instance, the sense of safety. So the subjective sense of safety of people has gone up by a lot. And this has to do with, you know, uh, increasing the police, um, promoting gated communities, uh, having a harsh prison sentencing practice, allowing military patrols in cities, and also uh, basically having no limits to gun ownership, 
which has increased by a lot legal gun ownership. So sense of safety has increased by a lot. Violent crime has decreased by quite a lot, but less than I expected, taking into account the different measures that we introduced, like military equipment for police, military patrols in cities, uh, extreme amount of funding for the police. It reduced, but not by that much. And crime, normal crime, non-violent crime, has gone down by around 10% which is not that much. It's an improvement, but it's not that much. So, so overall, I think we can say in terms of law and order and crime, Trump's policies have been quite effective, but not that much. I expected it to be more effective. And I think the main reason is that the social determinants of crime, so issues like poverty, unemployment, inequality, substance use and abuse, have not really improved. In some cases, it has getting worse. So that's why crime has gone down, but not by that much.